All right, guys, it is that time of the week yet again. It is time for another Green Bay Packers seven round mock drafts. I keep seeing comments saying, do a mock draft, do a mock draft after all of the free agent moves that the Green Bay Packers have made. And of course, just to quickly recap, cutting David Bakhtiari, Devondre Campbell, and Aaron Jones, and making two very big signings of Josh Jacobs and Xavier McKinney. And then also re-signing Keyshawn Nixon. So of course, we have to do another mock draft after the start of free agency. Now we do a new mock draft every single week. So if that does interest you, definitely go down and click subscribe, throw on post notifications so you don't miss any of these videos. On this channel, we also cover everything Green Bay Packers from free agency, salary cap, and the draft like this, along with any other news that comes out. So go down and click subscribe if you haven't already. All right, so before we dive into the draft, uh, quickly wanted to go over kind of the needs and how that might have changed because, you know, the Packers signed Xavier McKinney. So yeah, they still have a need at safety. They still very well could go safety round one with someone like Tyler Newbin. That's not off the table. Just because they signed McKinney doesn't mean that's off the table. They're not only going to run single high, and they still only have McKinney, Anthony Johnson Jr., and Benny Sapp. Not even include Zane Anderson in that because he's a special teamer in my opinion. So I still think the Packers could, A, sign a free agent safety still. There's still a decent amount of them left on the market. Uh, or go through the draft here and draft a couple in the draft as well. So there's still definitely an option there. Linebacker just kind of moved up a little bit on the need list. It was always a need for me. I always thought Devondre Campbell was going to be cut, and, and I've kind of done these mock drafts assuming so, but now it is official. And the Packers have very little depth at inside linebacker, so that could also be a, a selection early on in this draft. And then, of course, running back. Uh, you know, the Packers moved on from Aaron Jones and brought in Josh Jacobs. They technically got younger at that number one spot, but right now they really don't have a number two. Too. And of course, Josh Jacobs, right? He should be good, but he is yet to play on this team. So I still think the Packers could be players in this draft for a running back in the middle round. And then, of course, offensive line. That's kind of always been a need. Again, we kind of expected Bakhtiari to get cut here. Uh, so the Packers, you know, probably looking at some guards and also some tackles. All right, without further ado, let's dive down into this mock draft and bring up the screen. I'm not going to do trades yet again. Let me know down in the comments if you want the next one to have trades now that we're kind of getting past free agency and closer to the draft. I can do trades. I uh, just haven't yet because we're still decent bit away from the draft. So let me know down in the comments below if you want trades on the next one. So as of right now, Packers sitting at pick 25. So let's simulate the picks up to that pick. All right, so let's quickly go over the picks that happened in this draft. Caleb Williams at one, Drake May at two, JJ McCarthy at three. I uh, also wanted to mention PFF just updated that you could uh, move a slider to go towards more of the public draft board and the PFF draft board. I went slightly more towards the public because sometimes the PFF rankings, they don't um, accurately represent some of these players, such as Cooper DeGene always going top five. So it's a little bit more more accurate now. Marvin Harrison at four to the Cardinals, Romo Dunze to the Chargers, Jaden Daniels to the Giants, Malik Neighbors to the Titans, Fashanu to the Falcons, Joe Alt to the Bears, Quinion Mitchell, the first cornerback off the board. See, I like to see that. That makes more sense to me. To the Jets here, Byron Murphy at 11, Brock Bowers at 12 to the Broncos, Terry and Arnold to the Raiders, Fatano to the Saints, Dallas Turner to the uh, Colts here, Nate Wiggins to the Seahawks, Jared Verse to the Jag, JC Latham to the Bengals, Marius Mims to the Rams, Brian Thomas to the Steelers, Fuega to the Dolphins, Cooper DeGene to the Eagles all the way at 22. So this is kind of where that's more realistic and definitely a spot that, you know, if I were doing trades here and I see Cooper DeGene on the board at 22 or even 21 to trade up, it wouldn't cost much to go up to 20, 21, and 22. And if you really want him, which... I think the Packers might, and I think it'd be an awesome addition to this defense, adding McKinney, adding DeGene, adding other guys would be amazing. So if I were doing trades in this mock draft, I probably would have traded up once I saw him still on the board at 21. Then we have Jerzon Newton at 24. Uh, I skipped over Latu at 23 as well to the Texans. Jerzon Newton, someone uh, that's very intriguing. And if he falls this far, I would not be mad at all if the Packers make that selection. I mean, he's some of the most impressive tape um last year i mean he was the big 10 defensive player of the year in 2023 he had eight sacks good against the run great pass rusher all around great defensive lineman so if he was sitting there 24 also another trade up opportunity but now we're on the clock at 25 since we're doing no trades and there's a lot of good players on the board jackson powers johnson uh graham barton tyler newbin peyton wilson zach frazier there's a ton of options Cloyd mckinstry down here has been falling a bit now i've gone jackson powers johnson a ton in my mock drafts. I think I've done it three separate times and 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 I do really like him. But will the Packers spend a first round pick, their first overall pick on a center or just an interior guy? 
where Graham Barton, on the other hand, you know, three three straight years at left tackle, I think he transitions into guard or center in the NFL, but the guy could still definitely play tackle in, in the NFL. Uh, his description here, Barton is a tough and well-moving lineman with strong hands and a mean streak in the run game. His best position is in the NFL is likely at center as he brings starting caliber traits there. So you could kind of see both of these at starting center. And in terms of what the Packers like to draft, they love their versatile linemen. So they might value Graham Barton more than Jackson Powers Johnson on their draft board. He's also kind of fitting the length requirements at 6'5", where JPJ is 6'3". And I love JPJ, and I, I have him ranked higher than Graham Barton. But I do think with this mock draft, I'm going to go the Packers route, or what I think the Packers would do here, and go Graham Barton. He very well could be a starting center for the Green Bay Packers. He could even be a guard. He could be a tackle, right? depends but it gives you that versatility say if you really wanted to move Zach Tom inside you know you could throw Graham Barton at left tackle Rashid Walker at right or vice versa um, there's also Tyler Newbin here and Peyton Wilson I really like Tyler Newbin and I think he would complement McKinney like perfectly and those two guys back there would be so deadly so I'm very tempted to do that uh, but I think there's some other safeties that I could look at uh, Peyton Wilson is a guy I do like but I like Edron Cooper better and I think you can get him in the second round so with our first pick we are going Graham Barton tackle slash guard slash center out of Duke here at pick 25. Before we dive into the second round, I want to let you guys know that today's mock draft is being powered by Sleeper. And right now on Sleeper, you can get a first deposit match up to $500 with the link down below and using code BASS, B-A-S, that'll match your first deposit up to $500. On Sleeper, entries can be made in 30 seconds or less. It's really that easy. They're safe and fast withdrawals you can place in-game contests and can win up to 100x payouts and also thank you to sleeper right now for the month of march i'm giving away this signed christian watson jersey here so to enter in this giveaway simply download sleeper and make a first time deposit that'll enter you in this giveaway I'm, I'm doing this giveaway through the end of march so make sure to get in on this i'm really excited to give away this signed christian watson jersey to one of you guys so like i said go down click the link use code bass b-a-s you'll get a first time deposit match up to 500 dollars, and making that first deposit with my code will automatically enter you in this christian watson signed packers jersey Again, thank you so much to Sleeper for sponsoring today's video. All right, so now back into the mock draft. We're back on the clock at 41, and man, talk about a board falling perfectly. Tyler Newbin is still here. Would this happen? Probably not, but I've seen crazier things in drafts, and I, I like the randomness of mock drafts sometimes because... This is the randomness that can happen in, in the NFL draft. So I do like that. Do I think Tyler Newbin goes way before 41? Yes, I do. But things can happen. So we're sitting here at 41. And the board fell for us to select Tyler Newbin on top of Graham Barton, who we got at 25. So this is a very easy pick for me. There wouldn't be much, you know, conversing over this. It would be an easy run the card up situation. I mean, there's other guys on the board like Braden Fisk. Who I know a lot of people like Kamari Lasseter, Ennis Rakestraw, uh, Javon Bullard, and, and Jaden Hicks. But Tyler Newbin is by far safety number one. And if you could get him at pick 41, it's, it's a weaker class at safety, but Tyler Newbin is definitely number one. And we've gone over him in many mocks and like I said I think he would fit perfectly with McKinney you could put him in the box or you could play too deep with McKinney and Newbin man if the Packers go through this offseason and sign McKinney which they've already done and end up drafting Tyler Newbin in this draft let alone at 41 would be insane right this defense is going to transition into one of the better more aggressive style types of defenses under Jeff Halfley and I'm all here for it so pick 41 we are going Tyler Newbin safety out of Minnesota we're back on the clock at pick 58 now Edron Cooper and Jonathan Brooks and Chris Jenkins all just went right before our pick. Our three guys that I was going to be looking at here at 58. And of course, you know, you, you win one with Newbin falling to 41, and then you lose one here with three of your guys uh, coming off the board right before your pick. Cooper, a linebacker I would love with Green Bay. He just actually um, had a top 30 visit scheduled with Green Bay today. So clearly they're interested with him as well. Uh, the mutant Chris Jenkins would love to have him on this defense. And then Jonathan Brooks, like I said, running back being a need, I think he would be a perfect uh, addition to this backfield with Josh Jacobs, but they're all off the board, so we can't select them. Um, on the board, still Jatavian Sanders. I, I doubt the Packers go another second round tight end as, as much as that would be hilarious, right? Uh, Javon Bullard at safety. I think we got him in the last mock draft, but we just went Newbin. 
they signed McKinney. Yeah, they could definitely draft two safeties in this class, but I don't know if they do it, you know, two in the second round, right? Um, we also have Kyrie Jackson here as a cornerback I really like and might be my pick here to get a cornerback out here. Uh, but Marshall Nealand is another guy that I know a lot of people like, you know, an 89.7 PFF grade last year, uh, six sacks. Great pass rush win rate, 17.3. Great run stop rate of 11.0. 6'3", 275 pounds. We'll transition easily to this 4-3 defense. There's also Junior Colson here at linebacker. This would definitely be an option. Like I said, linebacker um, is a need for the Green Bay Packers, but I still think they could go out and sign someone like Jerome Baker in the coming days. So uh, hopefully they have an eye on some linebackers in the free agency. Um, I, I think they do sign one and draft one, uh, but if they sign someone like Jerome Baker, it won't be as massive of a need. You know, they still got Quay Walker and Isaiah McDuffie. Uh, but I think my selection here is going to be Kyrie Jackson. He has the length, which Packers love, 6 195 last year he allowed a 41.6 uh, passer rating had three interceptions only allowed 19 receptions on 38 targets great run defense grade um, low completion percentage allowed 50% zone coverage 74.9 man coverage 67.0 overall grade 77.4 he had nine forced incompletions only two missed tackles on the entire year which is definitely impressive he's mainly an outside cornerback and yeah it's kind of like one year of production that's kind of the worry here you know last year didn't play much the year before that same thing so 12 games played this year three the year before that five the year before that and if you see here Jackson's skill set is that of a press man corner back uh, obviously the Packers aren't going to only run press man as Halfley said but it's something that they will run and I think adding another cornerback that can do that well I think is awesome and we see some of his pros here physical player who likes to get his hands on receivers early in press and then hand fight through the route length is a huge plus for press and also for forcing completions impressive mirror ability for a player with such long legs consistently gets his head around to face the passer to try to break up and intercept passes did not miss any tackles in 2023 on his way to a high run D grade. I think it said he actually had two missed tackles um, in terms of running missed tackles too. So I don't know the inconsistency there. In terms of the cons, though he faces well in press, he can get pushed off balance against stronger receivers, has good recovery speed, but needs to anticipate better. So he isn't as behind when players get vertical. In terms of his RAS at 8.54, not the fastest guys. We see your speed grade okay, but 4.5 for a 6.3 corner, almost 6.4 corner. That doesn't come around often. Uh, a corner with this length and that type of speed and, and his ability there. I really like him, Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. The Packers have a need at cornerback. Yeah, um, I think they need more of a slot guy, but they did just resign re Keyshawn Nixon for $6 million annually, so it seems like they're very comfortable with him being on the defense, but they still need cornerback help. They still need cornerback depth. So we're going Kyrie Jackson here at pick 58, cornerback out of Oregon. Now we have our two picks in round three, and similar to the Tyler Newbin one, uh, this is an easy pick for me. It's going to be Jalen Wright running back out of Tennessee. I really liked him when we had Aaron Jones, and I kept saying, draft Jalen Wright. He'll be our next Aaron Jones. So that obviously still applies, and even more so now, because we don't have our Aaron Jones. We have Josh Jacobs, who arguably, you know, can be a better running back overall than Aaron Jones and still is young at 26 years old and did sign a four-year contract, but it's basically a one- to two-year deal with options for the Green Bay Packers. So they're still going to need to bring in a second running back for this offense in general because it doesn't look like they're going to bring back um, A.J. Dillon. And I think Jalen Wright would complement Josh Jacobs so, so well. His pros, top-tier athlete for the position. Explosive first step is very impressive. Legitimate long speed for the NFL. Reliable and pass protector. I did some of his film. I did a video on him going over his film and overall who he is as a prospect. If you want to go watch that, the video is on my channel. I really like him. He's one of my favorite running backs out of this draft class. So this is an easy pick for me, and I think it would just form an awesome one-two punch in the backfield for the Packers. So we're going Jalen Wright, running back out of Tennessee here at 88. Here we are at pick 91. I kind of wish Jerry and Jones was still on the board, but he was selected before our pick even at 88. Uh, Renardo Green, his teammate, outside cornerback on the board here, but we just went Kyrie Jackson. If I were to go another cornerback here, I'd want a guy that primarily can play slot. We have Mason McCormick as a guard here. Very impressive uh, season last year for South Dakota. Uh, De'Adrian Taylor Damerson here. Um, it's a safety I really like, but I think there's more of a need at linebacker. And Maurice Leofau is someone that I've, I think I've drafted in one mock draft before very early, either the first, second, or third mock draft. And obviously the Packers have a massive need at linebacker. I think he fits well here in the third round. 
Um, a 74.3 PFF grade last year. Uh, good run defense grade, good pass rush grade, excellent coverage grade. And he plays very physical despite his size. You know, 6'2", 239. He's a very explosive, powerful linebacker. His description, Leah Fowl is a powerful downhill linebacker. Her tax ball carries and blockers with pad intentions. His instincts and feel for spot zone coverage still need work if he is to be relied on consistently. He is projected as a contributing inside linebacker for either a 4-3 or a 3-4 defense. His pros, nasty when coming downhill. We want that type of aggression on this defense. Great power at contact despite being just three or 238 pounds. Nice change of direction, ability, slash explosiveness. Will never shy away from taking on blocks. Quick to push-pull blockers out of his way. In terms of his cons, a little slow to recognize where the ball is going and an average long speed. The Packers are very thin at linebacker. They need to add more depth to this spot. Wouldn't technically need to start right away. I think the Packers are really comfortable with Quay Walker and Isaiah McDuff, but he'd add much needed depth to that room. So at pick 91, we are going Maurice Leofau here, linebacker out of Notre Dame. Here in round four, we're going to go back to the offensive line and get Cooper Beebe. He's someone I mocked to the Green Bay Packers a ton. He's starting to make me believe like it's the Carl Brooks of this year, like a guy that I really want the Packers to draft because I think he'll be a, a great player in the NFL. And I and I do think that. I think Cooper Beebe is going to be an awesome guard in the NFL. We already got Graham Barton who can either you know be a center, can be a tackle, could play some guard, but he's likely going to be a center or a tackle at the next level where the Packers still technically have a need at guard right if they get Graham Barton he's either starting center or starting tackle dependent you know if you move Zach Tom inside to center or guard but you still need another guard Sean Ryan uh, you know, could be our starting guard. They, he was already splitting reps with John Runyon, who just signed with the Giants, so Runyon's gone. Uh, but there was some pretty bad tape out there on, on Ryan, but there's also some good tape, so inconsistent there. So we'll see what happens during camp, obviously. But during camp, you need competition, and Cooper Beebe would be exactly that. And this guy could very well take over as starting right guard for the Packers week one. I mean, you look at the last three seasons above an 80.0 PFF grade, only allowed two sacks in the last three seasons. Great pass blocking grade, great run blocking grade, and this guy is a mauler down low. 6'4", 335. BB's high football IQ should lead to a long NFL career. Unfortunately, his athletic limitations will likely limit that career to that of a backup swing lineman. I don't agree with that. I think BB will be a starting guard in the NFL. So I'm going to go ahead and draft him here at pick 126. Here in round five, we're at pick 169. I think I'm going to add an edge. I, I seem to kind of neglect edge in most of these mock drafts when it still kind of is a need. You know, Kingsley and Igbari coming off a torn ACL, a late torn ACL. Um, you know, he's not going to be able to play till like late November. The Packers switching to a 4-3. Yes, Car uh, Colby Wooden can play some edge. Um, but, you know, they have Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, and Lucas Van Ness. That's really their three guys. So they're going to need more. You're going to need more rotation there. You can never have enough guys to rush the passer. And Braden McGregor is a guy that I think would fit this 4-3 mold perfectly. 6'6", 267 pounds. Has the length the Packers like on their edge rushers. Last year had five sacks. The year before that, three sacks. Great run stop rate as well at a 9.7%. Great pass rush win rate at 14.5%. Pass rush grade, 75.1%. Run defense grade, 69.3%. So at this pick, we are going Braden McGregor, edge out of Michigan here in round five. Now we're on the clock in the sixth round at pick 202, and I think I'm going to add a third lineman. I think this is a draft that the Packers uh, could go three offensive linemen, and I think adding Graham Barton, Cooper Beebe, and someone like Hunter Norzad here, the center from Penn State, uh, last year didn't allow a single sack, had a 74.4 uh, PFF grade, but also has some guard versatility. We know the Packers, I, I sound like a broken record here, uh, but love their versatile players, and Hunter Norzad is that. And it's another depth guy. Like I said, they're kind of light on depth right now. Uh, they just lost two basically starting offensive linemen with Bakhtiari and Runyon. Yeah, I know Bakhtiari hasn't started too much in the past, past three years, but uh, nonetheless, I think this is a position that uh, they could draft three. And Gutekunst, you know, some drafts, loves to draft three of a certain position of need. So we're going to go Hunter Norzad here, center out of Penn State at 202. Here at 219, we're going to grab a depth defensive lineman. I think I've drafted him in one other mock draft. Evan Anderson out of FAU. Uh, great last three seasons in terms of PFF grade. Great run defender. Uh, also good against the pass. You know, got five sacks last year. Good pass rush win rate. But he is a run stuffer. 8.2% run stop rate. He's 6'3", 350. 
56 pounds. He's a guy, just a movable object in the middle of the defense. The Packers need another one of those guys for the, for the depth on that defensive line. So here at 219, we're going Evan Anderson, D-line out of FAU. Two more picks left in this mock draft, both in the seventh round. First at 245, I think we're going to go Jared Wiley here, tight end out of TCU, coming off a 520-yard season with eight touchdowns. Good receiving grade, uh, contested catch rate about average. He's 6'7", 260 pounds, and looking at his RAS, he, he's a very good athlete. 9.7 RAS, elite speed, runs a 4'6'2". Of course, like I said, 6'6", six six, 249, great vertical, 37-inch vertical. Packers need some depth at tight end. I know they just re-signed Tyler Davis, but he's more of a special teamer in my mind, and I think they could add like a late-round tight end in this draft. So we are going Jared Wiley, tight end out of TCU at 245. And here with our final pick at 255, I think I did this in the last mock draft, and I'll probably do it almost every single one because I love Keaton Oladapo here. And I think if you can get him with the pick 255 in the seventh, I, I'd take him with a six-rounder if I'm being honest. And, and he very well could go up to the sixth round or something of that sort. 6'1", 217. Great PFF grade last year. Great coverage grade. Great run defense grade. And not to mention Packers' new defensive quality control coach, Anthony Perkins, just came from Oregon State. So uh, getting one of his defensive backs on this team would be a plus. 19.4 forced incompletion rate. Uh, low missed tackle rate. 10 coverage stops, allowed 21 interceptions on 36 targets, only allowed a 61.3 pass rating, had two interceptions, seven forced incompletions, you know, played in the box, played in the slot. I, I think this would be a steal in the seventh round. He's another one of my draft crushes, and I'll continue to draft him in mock drafts because I want the Packers to get him, and I think it would be an awesome add. You know, if you have McKinney, you added Newbin, you still have Anthony Johnson Jr., then you add someone like Keaton Oladapo, man, that really transformed that safety room. So with our final pick, we are going Keaton Oladapo, safety from uh, Oregon State here. All right, so now let's go over the picks. This was Green Bay Packers seven round mock draft version 5.0. Oh, in the first round, we go Graham Barton at pick 25. Now, JPJ was available, but I do think Graham Barton is more of like the Packers pick in that scenario because he has so much versatility. He could play tackle, could play center, probably could play guard. Uh, where he'll end up with the Green Bay Packers, you know, that's anyone's guess. We'll see how training camp goes if they were to draft someone like Graham Barton and see what they want to do. It's about putting the best five out there on the offensive line, and Graham Barton would certainly be one of them. Then Tyler Newbin falls to us at 41. Again, do I think this would happen? Probably not, right? I think Newbin could go in the first round, but crazy things happen in the draft. That's why we continue to do mock drafts just to kind of see how certain things can fall and certain scenarios, how they would play out. So we've talked about Newbin enough. Adding him to McKinney would just be like perfect, in my opinion. Then we go Kyrie Jackson in this in their our second pick of the second round, adding a cornerback, an outside tall, rangy, physical press cornerback, 6'3. Um, with that type of athleticism, isn't seen often at cornerback in the NFL. So I really like that. I think they just it just fits the mold for the Packers' new defense. Then we go Jalen Wright, man. I, I love this guy coming out of coming out of Tennessee, and I really want the Packers to draft him even more so now that we don't have Aaron Jones. He could be you know our future Aaron Jones, and I really really like Jalen Wright, and I think he'd be a steal at pick 88. And then we go Maurice Leafau here at 91. Um, he's a guy I drafted before. There's other linebackers I definitely like over him, like obviously. Obviously, Edron Cooper, Peyton Wilson, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., but the way the draft board fell with our first four picks, we weren't able to get any of those guys, and the Packers do have a need at linebacker, uh, but I still think they're pretty comfortable with Quay Walker um, and Isaiah McDuffie, and I think they do sign another free agent, so getting Leofau here uh, would just add to that. Then we go Cooper BB in round four, guy keep mocking to the Packers, and I'm going to speak it into existence. Hopefully, they can get someone like Cooper. Hopefully they can draft Cooper Beebe in the fourth round. Then we go Braden McGregor in the fifth round. Edge is sort of a need. You know, they need a fourth guy as of right now, as of week one, because um, Enigbari won't be ready to play. Then we go offensive lineman yet again, the third in this draft. We got a tackle. We got a guard. We got a center. Uh, but, you know, Graham Barton can play anywhere, including center. Uh, but it depends where you want to put him. So this is kind of like an extra pick here just to get more depth on the offensive line. It's in the sixth round. Most of the time, six rounds don't pan out. I mean, John Runyon did as a six rounder, so it definitely can happen but Hunter Norzad you know good center last year at Penn State then we go Evan Anderson in the uh, other pick in the sixth round massive immovable object type of defensive lineman great against the run but also coming off a five sack season then we go Jared Wiley I think he's 6'6 athletic type of tight end like really good RAS I think a 9.7 the Packers need some depth at tight end in my opinion then we wrap things up with Keaton Oladapo just finished talking about him uh, I think he'd be a steal especially in the seventh round and I, I do see the connection with Green Bay and I, I think it it's someone that's going to be on their radar due to Anthony Perkins being a coach now um, on our defense. And I really like him and I would be ecstatic about this pick here in the seventh round. So that wraps up Green Bay Packers seven round.
mock draft version 5.0 post free agency at least the first three to four days of free agency let me know your thoughts down in the comments below um i like to switch these up i don't want to do the same thing every time and that's why i didn't go jackson powers johnson over graham barton here i just sometimes i like to sit back and think hey what would the packers do so that's what i like to do in some of these mock drafts but again let me know what you think down below and also comment if you want trades in the next mock draft but i appreciate you guys coming by to this video if you did enjoy it please leave a like down below supports the channel helps with the whole YouTube algorithm, but I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. And as always go pack, go.